What's up, Gator Nation? Zach Albaverde and Nick Del Torre coming to you live from the Orange and Blue Game 2024 edition. And it came down to the wire, I think, as script. And uh, as you, you know, saw a Trey, Matt, a Trey Smack, four field goals uh, on Saturday, probably one too many field goals attempted than uh, fans would have liked and uh, I think the coaching staff would have liked. But nonetheless, uh, they had more points scored. Uh, it has some some big plays, and more than anything, we got to see uh, a debut of this 2024 squad and, and some new faces too. Yeah, yeah, a lot of new faces. Uh, first, start with the two guys who are not new, but Graham Mertz, Trey Wilson. Uh, I think you saw kind of why Graham Mertz is QB one, yeah, uh, and why Eugene Wilson is WR one. Yeah. Um, on defense, a bunch of new faces. On offense, I already see a comment here talking about Jaden Ball. Um, I gave him a game ball. Yeah, yeah. Nick Saban uh, made Billy sweat to get Jaden Ball, and uh, I think today we got to see why Nick Saban uh, wanted Jaden Ball in Tuscaloosa. So uh, a lot to a lot to like, a lot to maybe not like. Talking about the field goals, uh, love to have Trey Smack, the other field goal kicker, did not convert any of his attempts. No. Um, some clock trickery at the end <laughs> to even get that last kickoff. Um, but these are – this is a practice. Uh, they make the rules. Um, and, and I did like first play of the game, hey, let's take a shot with DJ. Yeah. And now the offensive line doesn't protect really well, and DJ has to run, throw it on the run. Um, but I did like that. And I liked that you didn't – we talked about it on Thursday. You didn't put DJ Lagway with the second-team offensive line versus the first-team yeah. defensive line. Just right. like, hey, if you're going to yeah. play with the twos, we're going to go twos versus twos, good versus good. Yep. As much champ would say, you know, with the ones, make it fair. Yeah, make it fair. Um, and I think you saw probably what we were talking about. DJ throws a pick, but also has a bunch of plays where he could have gotten yards with his feet. Sure, has a couple dimes with his with his arm. So I think you leave this spring game feeling good about where DJ is, and also where Graham is, and, and then the fact that Graham is confident enough in his role, yeah, that he's not looking over his shoulder, not and instead he has his arm around DJ and is bringing him along with him. Yeah, and. uh we got to see those two together right here on this field after the game for the Florida Victorious event. Great turnout from the fans mm -hmm. that showed up to uh, have a meet and greet with these players and, uh, you know, see some of the stars of the show. As Nick mentioned, Mertz and Wilson were among the standouts. 128 yards uh, from Eugene Wilson today on eight catches, so 16 yards uh, per completion, which is what you like to see. Um, he never had a 100-yard game last season. I think so, he'll have one this year. Yeah. I think he will, and um, that's uh, you know a little glimpse at maybe what's to come in the fall. And as as Billy said after the game, we're gonna get our money's worth with Trey and uh, well, Florida Victorious get their money. <laughs> yeah, that's... Billy will get Florida Victorious' money's worth out of Eugene Wilson. That's right. Um, and then you know on, on the defensive side of the ball, it, it, it's like a double edged sword, right? Like you hate the fact if you're a fan that there were so many field goals attempted that the offense didn't finish drives, that they had red zone issues and they didn't get enough red zone touchdowns. But on the flip side of that, that means the defense is getting stops. And that means like guys like Pup Howard are getting a pass breakup in the red zone on the opening drive. And shout you know, out to the shooter. That's right. Shout out to the shooter. Um, you know, we saw and heard, should I say, we didn't see, but we heard and reported on the interceptions that happened in the first scrimmage, the interceptions that happened in the second scrimmage. Want to know what had happened today? And these guys got their hands on a couple balls. A great uh, interception by Manny Nunnery mm -hmm. and uh, Sharif Denson also as well with the pick. So I think that there's some things to like on both sides of the ball. You know, you, you don't really get a full sense for where the D line and front seven is at because they they are having to tag the quarterback and. A uh, couple plays there that could have been sacks that were not ruled sacks. Um, so we but, asked Billy Napier about that. That was a little yeah. funny moment in the press conference because Billy was the one that was calling if it was a sack or not. And he says every single defensive player is yelling sack, 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 <laughs> whether or not. Uh, like, DJ is 6'4", 240. Yeah. Uh, you might be in the backfield, but it doesn't mean you're bringing yeah. him down. If you uh, tagged him, you probably weren't sacking him in yeah, a real game. Yeah. If you, if you got a fingertip on him, you were not bringing him down in a real game. But on the flip side, though, Zach, is if you don't like the field goals or finishing in the red zone, what side of the ball did you find or did you, if you're watching this, what side of the ball frustrated you more last year? Was it the offense or was it the defense? And if the offense came out and lit the defense up today, you're probably thinking – 
who the hell are the three coaches yeah. they hired? Why do they stink? Why does the defense still stink? So I, I think Florida's offense has to go and, and get better in the spring portal, which will open up uh, on Monday um, at some positions like receiver, inside offensive line, tight end. But I'm encouraged by the progress, what Florida brought in in the secondary. Um, Ace the, Turner made a pick. Ace Turner is great. Um, I, I think DJ Douglas got beat on one of the – or DJ Douglas was there on one of the Trey Turners, but – I, I still like him. I th- still think he had a good spring. Um, I'm encouraged by the the strides the defense has made, especially the new players they brought in. And then some of the freshmen who had to kind of get thrown in the deep end last year who have earned and uh, or learned by being thrown into the fire yeah. um, and, and will be better for it this year. One thing I thought that was interesting about the end of the game and the game-winning kick scenario, and it, Billy didn't mention it, but he did say that it's something that they've repped hundreds of times. They kind of exercised some demons there from the Arkansas game. That was the exact same scenario. Arliss Boardingham catches a pass in opponent ter- territory, is trying to get down. They're rushing in to spike the ball. And we all know what happened last year uh, against Arkansas with the field goal team coming on uh, to the field and that whole mess that led to a, a missed game winning kick. So for them to execute that a little bit more cleaner, I, I think they probably. That probably feels good to kind of get that out of their system a little bit, even though in a spring game setting. Practice makes perfect. There was a, a field goal attempt with only 10 guys on the field trying to block it. So That was pointed out by the media members. Practice what you do in the spring so you can execute it well in the fall. Um, as long as you have 10 different jerseys on the 10 guys that are on the field, you're fine. Yeah, and now, uh, Nick, this brings us to the end of the road. Like Frank Sinatra. And now the end is near. Now we we turn the page on transfer portal. Mm-hmm. We uh, look ahead to SEC media days, and uh, you know start to look ahead to the fall season. But right now, uh, I think all in all, the biggest thing came out of this injury free, which is always a good thing. Um, yeah. And you know, only one went down, Cam Jackson, but yeah, uh, not serious. Yeah, he seemed fine, and you know, Florida now gets to get some time off, uh, regroup have exit meetings, uh, see where they're at with all their personnel and all their players and see what guys might be moving on and what spots that's going to open up for the portal. Now, look, Florida, as it stands right now, now by the time you guys are watching this tomorrow. Or if this, you're watching it live. Yeah, I mean, but um, if you're watching it later, maybe a Florida player puts his name out in the portal or says he's going to enter the portal. We know at least one guy has to because they've got 86 scholarship players for the fall. So they're, they're one over. There's going to be some movement. I don't think it's going to be crazy, um, but we're going to be tracking it. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be tracking it. You'll, you'll get, uh, if you're on the message board, you'll get uh, all that information before it comes out. Um, if you check the description of this video, there is a discount code, give you two months for $1. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of stuff. Bas- basketball transfer portals are already heating yeah. up. Yeah. Shout out to Portal uh, God Todd, landed a commit already. And uh, and listen, as we will be tra- focusing on the transfer portal, but as Eugene Wilson said, we're focusing on Miami starting now. Yeah. As soon as this game's over, focusing on Miami. Uh, what is it? We'll be back here September 31st, Gosh. August 31st. I'm ready for that game. August 31st. Port Mario Miami Chris is just here. That's a, that's a special series. Yeah. Uh, we were there in 2013. Down there in 2013. That was, that was a, a great Bernard, game. Bernard Hargreaves' first game. He wore 16 one time in here, got his pick, and then and then got number one. Uh, one too many Jeff Driscoll interceptions. That a day. young Nick Delatore wrote that it was unacceptable uh, for Florida to lose that game, and the company I was writing for, the people on that message board, were not happy with me for saying it was unacceptable. Uh, and then they lost seven more games the rest of the year, and I couldn't have been <laughs> – they couldn't have liked me more. That was when negative Nick was born, folks. Uh, <laughs> that was the season in which Nick decided to, at one point, just start picking against Florida every game until they proved him wrong, and they never did. <laughs> and Including the, me picking Georgia Southern to win. You did. Um, I, I did not think I was going to be right, but I'm a man of my word, and I said uh, I'll pick Florida to win whenever they get a win. Yeah. All right, we've fallen off the rails here. Yeah, found out this week um, 
Yeah, actually, I won't go there. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll leave that away. Uh, but appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure you stay locked with Gators Online for all of our coverage this weekend, not only on the team front, but on the recruiting front as well. We got Keith and Corey out there talking with the recruits that took in this game. Uh, so we'll have a bunch of coverage and make sure that you take advantage of the promo code UF1 if you're tuning in to get two months for just a dollar. So uh, we'll stay on top of the transfer portal as we turn the page towards that and uh, get you guys ready for the second half of the offseason. So um, hope you guys enjoyed the spring game, and we'll be back to visit with you all again soon. For Nick Del Torre, I'm Zach Albaverde. See you guys later.